All right, this is a quick video to show you my um, my PlayStation serial interface controller input viewer thing that I built. Um, it's essentially a uh, PS1, PS2 controller extension cable cut in half. One end goes to the console, the other end goes um, into a controller, and in the middle of it is a, uh, a teensy. Right there, you might be able to see that. And I'm intercepting the signals that are being sent from the controller to the console. So, to show you it in action here, we got Final Fantasy XII, uh, PS2 game, and then we got a DualShock 2. This is a third-party one. So you can see here, D-pad inputs, face button inputs, triggers. So this is a PS2 game. Uh, that means it's got full, um, full pressure sensitivity support built into it. So if you see like, uh, see the X button there? I'm varying the pressure that I'm putting on the button. Um, and my thing can totally detect that. Same thing for the triggers. Like here's barely pressing it at all, here's full force on it. Same thing for that, and that, and that. Start select. D-pad, of course. <laughs> so say if you were going to... Show off some sweet menuing. Or whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to do with this thing. This totally works. Nope. FF12 has the dumb inverted inverted camera controls, which you can see now, because we got the thing on screen. So this is just a Unity program, is the VH program. Um, all the data is being piped through uh, Serial Com 3. So pretty much any viewer program can be made. Uh, to make use of this data, it's not uh, it's not married to the thing that I'm currently using. All right, so we want to get this guy like right here. So you might see some uh, some jitteriness in the analog controls, and uh, occasionally something uh, a button might register as pressed when it's not pressed. Um, I'm working on that. That's some error correction stuff that's uh, that's in the works. So that's uh, that's the PS2 game. Let's boot into the uh, the main OS here and show you some other stuff. So um, by default, you're gonna see the analog dis disappears. That's because the um, the PS2. Uh, by default, um, puts a controller into regular mode, so the, the light isn't on here. But all the buttons still register. There's no pressure sensitivity stuff in um, in the uh, the menu here, so that's uh, that's just how that's supposed to look. Okay, so that's a um, a regular a PS2 controller. Now let's get in some other weird stuff here. So we've got a. Oh jeez, it's kind of a mess here. We got this, this is a PlayStation mouse. So, just plug this in, and, and, it should just detect itself automatically. Hold on, let me plug this in harder. All right, that one's not detecting right now for whatever reason. Let's try this one. Looks like something broke. Surprise, surprise. Uh, reboot this maybe? Data here? Of course not. Let me reboot this program. Maybe something got screwed up in that. Play. All right, what are we gonna get here? Hey, there we go. Okay, yeah. 
So something got screwed up after the uh, the other thing. I'll have to look into that. Okay. So here we've got a Nejicon. This is a weird um, analog controller. <laughs> uh, early PlayStation analog controller. It's the kind that you, you can go like that. It has one analog trigger, which is the L trigger, and then the right one, you can push it in all the way and then push it in more, and it clicks in. And that's the only time that registers. Um, the face buttons, these two are digital. B and A are digital. Uh, one and two are analog. Because, of course, um, start button, D-pad, which you'll almost never be using in a uh, um, an edgy con game. All right, let's give the mouse a try again. So still some bugs to be worked out here, of course. But these should all just um, appear automatically. There we go. Hey, okay. There's our mouse. Left and right click. I also get um, uh, delta data for like how far and how quickly I'm moving, uh, moving the mouse left and right. But um, I didn't know how to properly visualize that, so I didn't bother. I could just show a number, I guess, but oh well. All right, next up we got uh, we got this. This is the Jogcon. Um, this is a very specialized controller. It's only used in about three games, four actually, go like going between systems. So by default, the Jogcon shows up as a normal um, uh, a normal digital controller. Um, when you get to a game that supports it, or you just change the mode, you can do this. <laughs> And it has uh, it has the jog wheel, so we got uh, we get full data from this thing for the many many games that support this thing. Um, but besides the jog wheel, that's that's the only difference with this thing. And let's see, we've also got a gun con. This is a Namco gun con. Uh, there's some weird stuff that goes on with guns, uh, light guns. Um, there's that, there's A, there's B. Um, you can see it flashing, like occasionally it thinks the controller is something else. So that's another another bug I gotta work out. And then, last but not least, we've got the big one. We've got the... Uh, um, the dual flight stick thing. So this uh, this uses the um, original analog mode. So before Dual Shock, there was analog controllers, and this thing this thing was, works with that. So we got uh, we got this in digital mode right now, where the sticks just emulate that. Um, all these buttons just work, because of course. All right, let's back that up. And then if we put it into analog mode, you can see the sticks appeared. And A, hey, look at that. And look at that nice data that we're getting. Well, besides that, don't worry about that. But there we go. So um, this is the way that you can uh, you can grab input data from your controllers. Actually, playing from console. This is normally something you'd only see when you're playing off of like an emulator. But I got this to work. And it's pretty sweet. Thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for some more updates.